The Society of Automotive Engineers, or SAE, has developed a standard called the Performance Requirements for Determining Tow Vehicle Gross Combination Weight Rating and Trailer Weight Rating. In other words, how much can I tow? Also known as J2807, it was first developed in 2008, revised in 2012, and finally adopted by most, if not all, vehicle manufacturers in 2016. It's the standard that most vehicle manufacturers now use to base their brochure tow weight ratings on. Finally, we have closer to a real-world standard in determining towing capacities. Prior to J2807, most vehicle manufacturers used quite a bit of liberty in determining their tow ratings that they used in their brochures. For example, here's a disclaimer from a pre-2016 brochure. These trailer tow ratings are designed to provide acceptable performance for normal conditions of temperature, grade, and altitude. Maximum trailer weight ratings must be decreased by the weight of optional equipment, the trailer hitch, cargo in the truck, passengers other than the driver. Maximum engine cooling option may be required to achieve maximum trailer weight rating of gross combined weight rating. What the heck does that mean? The tow rating could be anything. There is one word I have for this. Bogus. My tow vehicle is a 2016 model pickup. In the brochure, it has a tow rating for a gooseneck and fifth wheel trailers of 14,900 pounds. If you look at the 2015 model, the very same truck, it was 17,300 pounds. So how did the truck lose 2,400 pounds of towing capacity in one year? Nothing changed in the truck. The only thing that changed was how they calculated the tow ratings. In 2016, they used J2807. In 2015, they used whatever they used before then. So the next time you pick up a brochure, flip over to the weight ratings page, and you should see that they are based on SAA J2807 as shown here. One important part of J2807 is how they develop the criteria in determining the tow ratings. This is done by something called the Davis Dam Test. It's a confidence course that all the vehicles must go through to determine how much they can actually tow. In the Davis Dam Test, the grade is on Arizona State Route 68. Tow vehicles climb this grade which is a 3,000 foot elevation change over a 11.4 mile stretch of the highway. And the tow vehicles must maintain a certain performance criteria while they're traveling over this highway. The grade along the route averages anywhere from about 3% to a high of 7%, with an average rate of around 5.7%. This is not extreme by any means, but it is probably more than what most people will encounter. However, when you add that the average high temperature is around 87 degrees with a peak summertime high over 100 degrees, those two factors combined make this a pretty significant test. The test criteria also includes the assumption of two passengers, both 150 pounds, and if the vehicle has a gross vehicle weight rating of over 8,500 pounds, an additional 100 pounds of cargo. Of course, if you normally carry four people, or if you weigh more than 150 pounds, then you're going to want to adjust your trailer towing capacity accordingly. You may recall that in the example of the pre-2016 criteria, they only assumed a driver only, not a driver and a passenger. Again, this tries to put a few more real-world conditions under the towing test. To pass the Davis Dam test, the vehicle must maintain 40 miles per hour, and by the way, the air conditioning is on maximum cooling. And they must meet the criteria for the acceleration braking and vehicle control. Now, no test is perfect, but at least these days, when you look at the J2807 tow ratings, you get a lot better idea of what your vehicle can really tow. And with the adoption of J2807 by most of the vehicle manufacturers, consumers now have a pretty good estimate, at least, uh, what their vehicles can tow and will allow us to compare one manufacturer's vehicle to another. Kind of makes you wonder why it took so long for them to adopt the standard.